Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And we had a really productive stream this week, so we've got lots and lots done, many, many things to talk about, so let's leap into it. Top of the list is over here, I've finally managed to get the Naquium actually flowing and running. So we've now got all the all the machines along here are running. We're, we're pulling in the uh, the crushed Naquitite at the top here, as you can see. It's being appro appropriately in enriched and uh, powdered over here, then passed through here, and then crystallized, I guess, and then cooked into the ingot. So all of this is now working, and I've, I, I think, and I, I probably will uh, regret saying this, but I think I've gone through and fixed all of the little problems and uh, issues that we were having, and now the system is just running happily. There were quite a few issues though. The top of the list was over here on this side where the, where the inputs come in. And last last time you, you may remember that we had a train coming in here from, from up in orbit and dropping off loads and loads of stuff that was then passed off down the belt. And this was working it was working fairly well. It was um, there were a couple of things missing at this point, but basically it, it was working okay. Uh, the problem is that uh, when I started to then increase the amount of various resources that we're bringing over in order to allow the ship to have a chance of well, basically, so the ship ship wasn't flying back and forth more than it needed to. Um, that meant that we ended up with, with rather too much stuff to fit in one warehouse. It all backed up, and some, we ran out of something. One of these things. It doesn't matter which one. We just we, we ran out of something. And so I've done a similar thing to the uh, the systems I've been setting up on. The the, uh, on, on the bus up over in Norbit by having warehouses feeding directly into warehouses with filter inserters that are fed with specific um, ingre uh, specific items uh, to be passed through. However, I've done it a little bit differently here. Rather than looking at what's in the top warehouse and subtracting the things that are supposed to stay there and then passing the rest through, instead I've got this accumulator here which is saying I want to have this many of all of these things in this warehouse and then I'm subtracting from that what's already in the warehouse by doing a times by minus one with this combinator, uh, ad adding those two together and then so that tells the that tells the inserters along here to pass through anything that should be in here but isn't so at the moment we're trying to pass through plastic rare metals cryonite rod and vitalic acid barrels because we've got we've got fewer of those than we than we expect than we want to have in these things but that's because they've then been passed down to here we, we're running i'm not going to say we're running low on those but we've we've uh, got below the sort of the, the the maximum amount that i expect us to store and then i've got exactly the same system down here as well for passing them down into here and looking at this it seems that cryonite is the first one that has actually dropped below the uh, the requested amount here. And that is because we are asking for a really, really large amount of it here. We're asking for 14,000 of it. But that's because cryonite stacks really, really well. So the idea I've gone for here is each of these numbers on this on this combinator are 70 stacks worth of whatever the resource is. And so the idea is that if we have 70 stacks of each of these resources, it won't quite fill up the warehouse. So as long as I have enough warehouses to keep to, keep, to, to, to take all of the inputs that are coming in, then we won't completely fill one up with any, by overloading it with any one of the resources. So there should always be at least a bit of every single one of them in here, as long as we have a sufficient supply coming in at the top. And so this seems to be working fairly well. I do notice that there's a little bit of sulphur left in the top one here, uh, which is supposed to have been passed through, and of iron ingots, and one or two other things. So yeah, there's a few things left in here, but there is quite a lot of space left in this in this warehouse. If I sort it, you can see there's a, there's a bit of space left over here. Um, and that, and the plan and the hope is, if the train does come down and is unable to unload, we will still have enough of all of the resources we need in these warehouses that it'll be able to keep running until there is space, and then the train will finally be able to empty. That train then does come over here to pick up the uh, whatever's being produced over here, and I've messed around with the with the uh, contr uh, controls on here a little bit. So, uh, and I've even put it over to uh, to manual because when I was messing around with it, so I could put it back over to um, over to automatic. And here it's waiting for a second of activity, so that means it needs it waits until there's a brief pause in the uh, in the naquium coming through from here and here. Um, I think I'm going to need to look at these trains a little bit more because. They're not. They're not smart enough. This one, and and to be honest, the one over here as well. I think they're not. They're not currently quite smart enough for what I want them to do. Um, I need to. Come, I need to think about it a bit harder and come up with a better way of telling the ship, of telling the trains when to dip, when to when to depart. But there we go. It's, it's had its uh, second of inactivity, so it's now now heading up back up to orbit with the uh, with the resources we've made. I mentioned that some of the resources were missing, so we've got an extra belt here now for the vitalic acid, having realised that that was that was something we also we also needed, and that went its way through here and goes into the bottom. Here, and that's how we've managed to start making the crystals. We had a fairly major problem last week as well with the uh, warehouse over here being completely full of vitalic acid barrels. So the problem with barrels is that you don't get a huge amount of, of stuff in them. As you can see, it takes it only takes 50 uh, of vitalic acid to fill up a barrel. So if you're getting through hundreds of it, then you start using large numbers of barrels. And because barrels only stack up to 10 in the warehouses, you can very, very quickly find that gets a bit out of control. And so what I've done down here is I've put in an unbarreling system, which, which we, we had last, uh, last time, and then there's a tank at the bottom 
bottom here that's taking all of the uh, all the vitalic acid from as many of these as many of these barrels as it can. So this, this will just run flat out, trying to trying to um, em empty as many as it can. And then down here, we've got, I've got this um, arithmetic combinator that's dividing the amount of vitalic acid by 50 and reporting that as barrels. So that's the equivalent number of barrels that are in this uh, in in this tank over here. That's then being sent back around here and added on to the number of barrels that are actually in the tank, which is apparently seven, 751, oh, plus another 73. So not a lot anyway, um, with the intention of making sure that we don't actually end up ordering too too many of them, but that we can empty them all out and shove the and shove the liquid into the into the tank over here in order to keep it out of the way and uh, and keep the system and keep keep the system sensible, should we say? I've put in a processing system for the empty barrels, so for a little while they were just being passed up and put in this warehouse. The warehouse is no longer needed because now we have a belt coming around here that will feed them into this crusher. Um, I put in the speed modules to in order to get through the backlog. They're not really needed anymore. I could probably take those back out again um, at some point. And then they're fed into the warehouse over here. So you can see we've got... Um, a chunk of we've got some uh, a load of naquim ingots, a load of naquim crystals, and then steel plate appears in here as well, and we'll eventually load that onto the train, and that can just be then taken away back to Norvis and become somebody else's problem over there at the other end. I also realised that I'd forgotten to deal with some of the outputs from the system because, as you've seen from the diagram, <laughs> we produce all kinds of random nonsense out of this system as well as as well as the bits and pieces we actually want. So you can see along here we've got all the filters that we I showed you um, probably a couple of weeks ago at this point. Uh, and so sometimes at this stage here, it takes in the holmium cables, and sometimes it produces a little bit of holmium powder. And that, and I hadn't dealt with that previously. It was just going onto a belt to nowhere. And so now I've got this belt that comes around here, and it's being fed into a into a furnace where it's then cooked down into 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 molten holmium with the, with the help of some pyroflux. It's then turned into ingots, chopped into plates, turned into into cables, and then passed back round. And that just passes it back up into the warehouses up here, so it can just go round and round and round forever. And I feel that's quite a nice way of doing it because we don't get very much. Holmium out of this out of the system this way, but this does mean it, it all just gets used up. It gets recycled, and we can and we can we can use it again. Uh, that meant I needed to bring in rather a lot of different things though. So there was the pyroflux, which actually we needed elsewhere as well. But I also had to run a what I'm going to describe as a mark belt because it's a bit crazy. It goes all the way from all the way from over here where we where we have a certain amount of um, a certain amount of sand being stored by the um, by the beryllium processing system. It's brought all the way around here, <laughs> down and in, in, into the uh, in, into the um, casting machine in order to make the the ingot. The plastic was already nearby, which is part of the reason I did this over here. Um, and as I say, I had to bring in the pyroflux as well. But the pyroflux was also, that was another thing I'd forgotten. The pyroflux was require, is required for this step over here. Um, and I just completely blanked on it. I'd forgotten that was another thing that was needed. So again, we have another massive long pipe. And this one runs all the way over to here, here up here somewhere. Yes, this is this is where we're making the pyroflux for the, uh, for the beryllium. And this is a little bit of a concern. Because this pyroflux is being made from the vulcanite that's coming in for the beryllium processing. So at some point, uh, there's 32,000 of it at the moment, so I don't think it's going to be a problem, an issue for a while. But in theory, if we don't use up any beryllium for quite a long time, and we just keep using, uh, but we do keep using up the uh, the vulcanite in order to make the naquium, we could in theory run out of it over here. Now it's, it's possible to, I could bring in some of the vulcanite from here over this way as well. Um, but I'd need to find some sort of cunning way of balancing the two, or maybe I should start making pyroflux down there for, the, for, for this one. And I, since I've already got a supply of sand down here, it wouldn't be too difficult to do that. But yeah, I don't know. It feels like it feels like repeating myself a bit to put in an additional um, pyroflux production system down here. But I think if I start having problems, that might be what I end up doing. I think the sand should be okay because the sand mostly comes from the uh, from the core processing, and we're prioritising the core processing fairly highly. So we're getting quite a lot. As you can see here, there's quite a lot of stone and core chunks coming out, and so we'll get a decent amount of stone out of that. And if I look down here, we can see yes, there is still stone being passed out to go into the spaceship over here. So it looks like we do have a plentiful supply of both stone and sand. So at the moment, at the moment, absolutely fine. But we'll, we'll, it's something to keep an eye on over over time, I think. I also sorted out the beryllium powder output, which comes out down down here, the, the green one, in a sim very similar way to the holmium. But this one is being fed back up and with another, another long belt, and going all the way over into the production system over here. And um, because of some prioritization I've done, which I'll talk about in a little while, I had, to, I had to unplug that from this one and start bringing it up and putting it into this machine up here instead. Uh, it wasn't a serious problem, but it was something I had to make sure I did. 
I also spent a little bit of time looking through the recipes for Deep Space Science 1 and discovered that one of the things you need is, is uh, Naquium Crystals and that's why I've started bringing those out. So I've done that, my, my original design for this was to, start, was to pull them out from the end of this belt because they were backed up along it. But it turned out that whenever there was any kind of hiccup they then stopped coming through here because they all got snaffled by these machines so it wasn't really working. And so I've managed to squeeze in an extra belt down here. So I've put in an additional um, splitter. So we're now splitting to go to take half of it off to the uh, off to the spaceship or the train to the spaceship, and half of it out to the uh, to the Naquium processing. And that means we don't really have as much Naquium coming out as I would really like, and as, as I designed this for. So I think I might need to put some more of these uh, centrifuges in. The only problem is that this belt is already running more or less flat out, and it's a purple belt already. And if I start pulling more powdered and enriched out of these two uh, chests over here, then I might start to run out of it. So I'm, I'm a little bit loath to do that. Uh, but I do still need to have, I do feel like I need more of these crystals. Um, there is still plenty of space over here, as I was talking about before, where I could put more processing in if, if required. So there is there is the capability to increase the uh, the throughput of this. But as I was saying, the the rate we're pulling this through is pretty much it's it's as fast as we're making it over in in these machines over here. And so I think in order to get any more through increased throughput out of that, I might need to upgrade the amount we're pulling through here. And I've put in an upgrade planner to say to upgrade these to green belts, which to be honest, might not be such a good thing because eventually, because that's just going to push the problems back and back up the logistics chain. But having more of it, I don't know. I think I guess we'll sort of see how it runs. Let let it run for a little while. Get the Naquium over to Norbit. Find out how much we're using up. Whether there's a problem, and then if there is a problem, then we can talk, think about expanding then. But for the time being, for the time being, it's kind of okay, I think. And so, in order to try and keep it okay, well, at this point. I brought in large quantities of all of the all of the um, other th products that are required for making the Naquium. So my plan now is well, the, sh the ship is stuck because I haven't finished programming it yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave this leave this running and find out which of these things run out and when it when one of them does run out, find out how low the other ones have got that sort of thing to give me a bit of a feel for how how good my numbers are for all the different things we're ordering. For example, if we run if we run out of plastic, say, and the cryonite is nearly all gone, then uh, um, but everything else has still only got only got through half of the amount I ordered, then I'll know that if I double those two, then that will bring everything more or less back into sync. It's not going to be that simple, and I'm pretty sure it's actually going to be sulfur that's low, because it always is. Uh, so, but, uh, but it does give me a bit of, once I've done that, it'll give me a bit of an idea how to get all the numbers balanced, which things I need more of, which things I can get away with less of, and so, and then also, how much Naquium and how much Crystal is going to be produced when I do that, so I can decide what would be a good point for the spaceship to leave. What I might do is tell the spaceship to leave when we get down to our last, I don't know, 2,000 sulphur or something like that down here. That might be a good time to do it because that means we're, because that way I don't have to worry about trying trying to think how many um, crystals e each ingot is worth and so on. I can just let I can just let the uh, tell the spaceship to depart either when it's full, or when it run, or when we near we're nearly out of sulphur down here, or whatever the whatever the limiting factor turns out to be. And I think that'll be quite a good way of keeping the uh, keeping the ships flying and um, and ge keeping all the resources flowing, whilst also not having to try and not trying to fill a spaceship up because there's no way we're going to be able to fill a spaceship up with Naquim. It doesn't. It, yes, it doesn't. It doesn't stack very high. I mean, you only get ten to a stack, but even so, I don't think we're going to be able to actually fill the spaceship up with the amount we're going to be producing over here. Meanwhile, on the other side of Talos, I, I fixed a few minor problems. Once again, the uh, core mining had backed up, and this time, rather unusually, it was due to an excess of mineral water. So all the mineral water we're, ta we're taking it away and using it for the um, using it for the Naquium processing, sure. But apparently, Naquium processing doesn't get through all that much of it. So my previous plans of thinking, right, okay, I need to, I'm going to need to come out here at some point and put in some mineral water mines. Looks like I'm not going to need to. We're getting more than enough coming out of the core processing. I enough, enough more that I actually put in an extra tank down here with a with a flare stack next to it as a sort of an, an overflow. So we, with with this pump down here, we can now watch for when we've got more, when we've got more than twenty thousand in here, we can blow some of it off. Uh, so we're going to pump it out over this way as a priority. But if the tank at the other end of this pipe fills up, then this tank will fill up, and when that one fills up, then the flare stack will blow it off and void it. So we've got an emergency relief release valve over here that will stop this breaking again. And so, because that's working again now, we can get the uh, we can get the um, a little bit of beryllium trickling through. We get the core chunks coming through. We've got lots of beryllium ore or beryl, as I think it's called, coming down here to be made into the beryllium hydroxide that we can ship off for the Naquium processing. That's all working very nicely. And I've put in a priority system to to set this one, this system here, to run all the time whenever it can. But then turn off this one, these these two up here, and uh, this one down here whenever we've got lots and lots of it in in Norbit. 
So looking over in Norbit, we have we have crazy amounts of beryllium at the moment. We've got, as we can see here, you've got I've got uh, a full a full warehouse there, another full warehouse there, a mostly full warehouse here. So we've got crazy crazy amounts of it that we just don't know what to do with. So I thought, well, rather than trying to work out exactly how much. Um, beryllium should be in this warehouse before it stops feeding, which is what I was doing before, and it didn't really work because it didn't really make sense. Instead, what I've done is I've pulled the signal from, from Norbit, uh, which we're calling Science Stock, because it was originally the amount of science we had in, um, available in, 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 all of the, uh, in all the warehouses up there, uh, and is now just taking all of the supplies from, that, that we have over in, um, over in uh, Norbit. So on here, you can see that we have 138,000 beryllium, we have 102,000 vulcanite, and so on, all the way down to only 288 Energy Science 1. Um, so we've got a, a range of different things in there that tells, tells us what's available, and it's the beryllium we care about here. So I've then piped that out n number into de to down here, where it's on the output of this of this system. And I've said if we ever get below sixty thousand, then I think we want to start making beryllium as fast as we can. So we'll then dump, we'll then turn on all of the 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 advanced pro all of the processing that's done from normal mines, and and ship out as much of it as we can. But as long as we've got lots and lots and plenty of it, then why bother? Uh, why don't we just run it off the core mining? And I've just noticed that actually down here we're not running off core mining because this belt here goes up into here and this one is also feeding through. Oh, yeah, this isn't quite, it's not quite as good as I wanted it to be. I might need to do a little bit of tweaking there. But the theory is that we uh, we block all of the outputs except the ones that are coming from the core mining when there's more than 60,000 beryllium over in Norbit and so that will keep that will uh, ensure that we've got we've got the, the steady trickle coming through from the free stuff and then if we start to run short then the rest of the system will kick in and we can run at full pa full power full steam ahead full speed uh, and this seems to seems to be working pretty well apart from having just noticed that yes this belt is running as well and it shouldn't be so stop that um We'll fix. We'll fix this. I'll fix that in, in the next stream. But in, but in theory, we've, we're now just making the free beryllium, not making the expensive beryllium or the the, the potentially limited beryllium. I had some problems with the uh, the the train down here. So this one is supposed to go up. It's supposed to head up to, to Norbit when S equals thirty two. So that means when the train is full, because that's being taken from reading the uh, the belts along here. So when the so when when there's stuff on the belts here and the train uh, and the train has been idle for any amount of time, then that means that the train is effectively full and we're not able to put any more stuff in no matter how, how hard we push, so the train needs to go because it's full. This one was a little bit more complicated. This is watching the uh, the amount of sulphur in the uh, in, in the warehouses. So it's watching the, it's watching the amount of sulphur on the signals here, and we have a minus fifteen thousand up here plus whatever's in the warehouse. So at the moment we've got seven and a half thousand in there. So you can see we have seven point four thousand sulphur, and so that is not triggering the train here because it's not equal to minus fifteen thousand. But if this warehouse empties completely, then we will have no sulphur minus fifteen thousand. So we'll see that minus fifteen thousand, and that means that there is no sulphur down here. So but there is a problem. This one is the signal coming down from space, uh, and it's being it's coming down down the transmitter, being passed over to here, and being converted from sulphur to yellow. And this signal includes what's down here because it's being transmitted from here. But this is the sum of what's down here and what's up in space. So if uh, if that one's minus fifteen thousand and this one's greater than minus fifteen thousand, then that means there must be some up in space. And so if the train's idle and there's none down here but there's some up there, it's worth going and getting it because that means we've run out and we're going to have problems with, us, with our uh, beryllium production. So yeah, that should, that should work nicely. The problem was I had it wired up wrongly. The cable came out of here and I think it went... I think it linked straight into the into the uh, station over here, and then the two sides were linked over here. Whatever it was I'd done, it didn't work. So now I've now I've, I, I came in and fixed that. So it's now working nicely, and the train will well. The train is, is currently filling up, but it, but also it would then also leave if there was a, if there was a sulphur problem as well. I said just now that we had I had a problem with the mineral water filling up. That wasn't the only problem I had. I also had a problem with uh, water filling up over here, and that meant the beryllium processing stopped working, which meant we stopped getting beryllium hydroxide out here, and the naquium processing stopped working. It's all a bit linked together. So when one thing breaks, everything else just collapses. And uh, so I fixed that in a rather simple way. I've got, I've now got so this this pump will go when there's more than twenty thousand in the tank. Uh, which there currently is, so the pump is trying to go, but the pipes are full. So we've got another one, emergency one down here, which where it says when there's more than 24,000, pump it through here and just blow it off in the flare stack. Because we've got a slightly silly system where water is being brought in out of the out of the lake over here. It's brought over, turned into sulfuric acid, um, because you need water for that. The sulfuric acid then comes over here and dissolves the uh, the beryllium ore. 
and then water is extracted from it and brought out over here. So we have water being used up over here but being produced over here and if the two systems get out of balance then you start to have problems. So I've started, so I've just started blowing the water off. I mean it's water, it's a free resource, nobody cares. That works quite nicely. Meanwhile, over on Andrigan, Mike has been expanding, and not just because it's Christmas time and he's had a big dinner. Uh, we've, he's, so this is our stone planet. This planet is one because we were running a bit low on stone, so we thought, right, okay, let's send Mike out to Andrigan, where he hopefully can't cause too much chaos, to mine up some more stone and just bring it over and, uh, and ship it over to Norvis in, in enormous quantities. And so he's, he's basically doing that. There is, um, there are, the, we've got core mining drills around here. He says he's put in a new one over here. There we go. He's, put, he's even put in a, a little label for me, so, so I can't miss it. So there's a new core mine over here, feeding it out along a sort of a slightly windy, wendy belt that's bringing it round here. And as you can see, all of this is backed up, but we do have a lot of coarse front chunks available. So when we have some space, we can pulverize those down. And as you can see, you get out loads of stone and, and, and vanilla core chunks. Vanilla core chunks come over here, get pulverized down to st more stone and some byproducts as well. All of this gets fed down here into the warehouses and put into a train. Uh, the train then takes it up to space. Uh, we can we can then take it away in a spaceship, bring it over to Norvis, turn it into all the stuff we need for stone. Now, the thing that makes this planet a little bit more interesting is that Mike decided it would be fun to try and harvest absolutely every resource on this planet. Obviously, he can't take all of the core chunks, but he's going to try and strip every single other patch on it. And so, in the, in that direction, he's put in all of these various different mines around here. Um, one, two six, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> um, and so and, and so he's so he's digging up large quantities of stone up here, which are being chucked straight into the uh, presumably chucked. In, no, they're all, all it's all going into this back warehouse. So he's got so he's got stone from up here. He's got vi more vita from here. He's got copper, more stone coming in from down there. There's some iron coming in from over here. Is that iron? No, it's not. It's not iron. That's cryonite. They're both blue, but you know they are. They're actually technically different. And iron, iron coming in from here. So those are all going into this warehouse. And this is the system I talked about last time, which will monitor the train. And when the train is has above sixty percent uh, stone, it'll start to feed other things through as well. So we will be bringing through mostly stone, but there'll also be lots of other things as well for uh, so it might can try and empty completely empty his planet. And if we look at the opposite end of this uh, elevator, we can see that the uh, the trains have the trains have stopped here because the the warehouses are full. We're now waiting for for an Andragon ship to come back again. Um, there it is. It's. It is on its way. It's on its way back over. So it's unloaded its load of stone and some byproducts in Norbit and is now coming back out again. The Kothar 2 seems to be sat there stationary. Maybe that one hasn't been properly implemented yet we, uh, or isn't, isn't really needed yet. And the Taras 2 is sat there. Oh no, what's probably happened is that there is a Koth the Kothar 1 is parked here and the Taras 1 is parked here and therefore there isn't anywhere for the uh, ships to park yet. But as soon as they fill up and leave, or empty and leave in the case of this one, the other ships will park and everything will be hunky-dory. Probably. Speaking of second things, Mike has also put in a second train to bring up the resources from Andragon because there's so much of it. Um, so he's going yeah, to gonna, gonna have plenty flowing through from there. I confessed last week that I'd made a bit of a mess of the of um, Mark's cunning uh, count it in, count it out, Vita, Vita everything system um, by accidentally taking some stuff out of a warehouse I shouldn't have done. Uh, Tristan has be apparently been in and fixed all that up now, now so, so we should be bringing over the right amount of Vitalik everything, and that means we can now keep an eye on everything over in Norbit, and we should see that we've got about the right amount of everything coming out here. Now I see I see I see a gap on the a couple of gaps on the belts here. So we've got the the Vitalik is that Vitalik extract Vita extract no spice and uh, Reagent, yes. So those have both run out apparently, at least down there. There is some of them up here though, so we're not, we haven't got an absolute crisis level yet, but we've got a bit less of them than we'd like. But that probably means that we're loading more into the spaceship at the other end, so it'll be brought over and everything should be okay because apparently the system is now able to count again. Uh, the problem was there were a load of barrels of vitalic acid in this warehouse, so I took them out, but I Kept, I managed to count the wrong way through sort of sheer muppetry or something like that, um, and I, I ended up taking, I ended up counting them as putting extra ones into the system instead of taking them out of the system, and that threw the numbers way out, and um, yeah, caused caused a massive headache. Uh, it, it, the problem, the it, the cause of the problem was fixed, and um, I don't know whether Tristan has actually reset the counts somehow because that was that strikes me as a, a difficult thing to do, or whether he has merely increased the amount of vitalic acid barrels that we're we're requesting, and then gone around and checked everywhere to make sure that we're not. Um, we haven't got any, any other places pulling things out when they shouldn't. I'm um, not certain. But also on Big Red, Tristan's put in an iron mine, apparently. I'm not quite sure where. Um, there's an iron patch there, but it's not that one. 
Um, but the reason he's done this is because there wasn't enough iron coming out of the um, coming out of the core processing to to make enough uh, to make enough barrels to ship all the things out. And this was partly because suddenly we've had a massive run on requiring vitalic acid barrels um, because I'm using so much of that for the naquium processing. Uh, but it, but in general, it's, it's a good idea to make sure you've got a, a backup supply of things when when it's relatively easy to do. Um, and in this particular case, it is easy. This, this is probably what, yes, this is where he's got it from. So there was an iron patch right here. In fact, I think this is the one that Mark was using originally. Um, um, but from slightly further down, and he managed to um, deplete it completely. So now we've yes, we've got the um, we've got it being brought in over here. I imagine that's reading uh, reading the belt and saying yeah, so it's watching what's on the belt there, and then feeding through from here if there isn't enough, if this belt isn't full. So in theory, we will still be so in, pra in practice, we will still be using all of the iron that's produced from the core chunk processing first, which seems to have stopped. Interesting. Oh, probably because we're not actually making anything at all. And then if there's ever a shortage of iron coming through here, then we can pull a little bit more out of these out of these mining drills and. And have, and have some additional so, so that the system will carry on working. He's also made some tweaks in the science area over in Norbit because we didn't have enough of the, some of the iridium things being brought up. Uh, so we were getting we we're getting to the point where we were running out of them over here, getting starvation before a train would bring more up and drop them off here. So we don't want that to happen. We want to have large enough buffers that even when a train is on its way up, we can carry on working through the buffers and then have some more arrive before we actually run out. So he's increased the numbers up here. And because we've been doing so much astro research recently, he's uh, we found that he, he, uh, these these machines over here, because he's sped the, these ones up so much with all these speed modules and this beacon up here, they were getting through the catalogs faster than the catalogs were being made and brought in. And so he's come along to presumably wherever it is down here somewhere, yes here, and put yes he's put speed modules into all these machines that are making the catalogs. So we're now making them a bit faster, and so we've caught up and everything is looking great here. And yeah, things things are working well. I do worry a little bit that speeding this stage up is going to mean that all of the rest of the stuff up here is then going to start struggling. Because even if we went through and put speed modules in all of these, the limiting factors along here would then be the rate that these belts are capable of bringing these uh, these blank, data, blank frames through. And so that could potentially cause a problem. However, there's, there's quite a lot of buffer on the belts, so as long as we don't do astro research all the time, we occasionally do other things as well, I think it's probably going to be all right, and we can just, we can just pull as much through as we need, and then let the buffers refill while we're doing a different type of research. In the last videos, I showed you how um, some modification, how, how the system over here had been set up to now uh, send out the probes and the uh, probe rockets out to Stardust, so those could be launched from out there and bring back these uh, these deep space void prob data probe catalog data card, what are they called? Uh, interstellar void probe data, there we go, I knew they had an actual name. Uh, and so uh, Tristan has been fa fiddling with this train to try and get things appropriately balanced and so he's dropped this down to only bringing out four at a time because then we should be able to fit all of the data uh, cards they produce onto this train and it's going to be able to take them back around and unload them at the other end. And so he's now he's now finished programming this, he's cleared out the bit of a backlog we had here by bringing them all over to an area that I'm going to show you a bit more in the next video but they are being dropped off over here now going into this warehouse and they can then be taken off and scienced with. Uh, over here we have 155 stacks, that's um... Uh, it's like a what a sixth of a warehouse, so that's gonna yeah it's gonna last us quite a long time. I think we're probably okay with that uh, for now, at least at least for now. Also noticed that the uh, the probulator drop train was not coming up when the uh, when the system when they would, when it had run out of something, and so Tristan's put in a system that's going to monitor all of the warehouses over here, and when anything that this train is responsible for runs out, it's going to send a ping down to down to the ground to say, hey, by the way, you should probably come and sort this out. We, we, we've run out of this thing. He also says he's done it in a generic way using various extra combinators, so presumably that's the, the all this stuff up here. So how 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 is this even working? Let's have a look. All right, I see I see how this works. It's kind of complicated complicated but we've got the signal coming in on this side which is the amount of whatever it is we have up here that's in stock we have negative numbers in here these are the amount we want to order this is our shopping list and so we're then monitoring over here if any of them are negative then he's going to pass through one of that thing that one then gets passed over to here where it's um, combined with the negative of what's coming what's in the stock so if we have so that means that if there if it is actually completely empty then we'll see a plus one of that item and then this combinator over here says if you see one of anything or more than more than if you see more than zero of anything then output this arrow and then on the other end there'll be a thing that says if you see an arrow then go that's uh, I feel like that's a little bit more complicated than the way I set it up but also it's probably done it with fewer um, combinators and it doesn't require additional combinators in the same way that, um, that my, my system did so this is a little bit more elegant but also a little bit more complicated so but yeah I, I think that that, work, that, that that works quite nicely I see how he, I see how he's doing it 
and it should be, in theory, that's probably going to be slightly easier to expand out and put onto other other systems around the place as and, as and when required. I think I'm going to cut the video there. This seems like a good point, about about halfway through the list of things I want to talk about. So uh, thank you for joining. Uh, there will be uh, there will be another video on Monday. Yes, Christmas Day. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to work very very hard to make sure it's available for you. And there's going to be some exciting stuff over here to talk about. So I'm not gonna, not going to give you too many spoilers, but there's been some exciting progress, and there's still still more of it to talk about. So uh, plenty plenty going on around here. Uh, there won't be a satisfactory stream on Tuesday because that's Boxing Day. It's possible it may happen on Wednesday, but I definitely don't want to promise that one. Uh, we, we, we shall see. If not, there will definitely be a video coming out on Wednesday, so there'll be something, something for you to watch on the channel, uh, even, if, even if it's not a stream. And then on Thursday, I do expect to be back home again. I will definitely be here streaming some more K2SE. Um, who exactly who's going to join me? Well, we shall we shall wait and see. But I'm sure I'm sure I won't be completely on my own. Uh, so yes, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll come back and join me for the next video and for the stream on Thursday. And I'll see you then. Bye bye.